All right, welcome to part two of the replication tutorial. So in the last one, we kind of covered variable replication. So in this one, we're going to cover event replication, which is very similar to some degree, but obviously has some differences. So I think the best way to do this is to just keep building on our current example of this cube, except we'll change it from using variable replication to event replication, and then we'll make it so that it you know, in the end, it has the final, it has the same result. So let's open up this cube base here and let's take this variable and we'll say, let's put it back to none. So that way it doesn't replicate anymore. And then we'll also change, let's, let's disable the, uh, where is this? The network emulation. Let's turn that off just so we don't have to wait on things anymore to replicate. Okay. So now if we play this, we'll just, be sure here if we collide with the cube it no longer oh it doesn't even change colors oh because the so it's not even changing colors on the server anymore and that's because this rep notify doesn't even get called on the server anymore and so that's why it's not changing colors at all it actually confused me for a second um, but then i understood so let's make it work again but let's use event replication so to do that um, you have to obviously make an event. So let's say add custom event, and then we will call this set color, and we will say multi in all caps. So the reason I'm naming it this is because if we come over here to the replicate section um, for this event, we also have a replicate dropdown, um, but it looks different than it does for variables, right? So for this one, we have not replicated, which is what it is by default. We have multicast, um, which is why I called it underscore multi, because we're going to be selecting this one. So what this one does is it replicates the event from the server to all the clients. Um, it also, as you can see right here in the comment, it also says the server executes this as well. Um, and you can only call this from the server. So if you try to call this from a client or somebody who doesn't have authority, then it's not going to work. So let's just focus on this one for right now. So I'm gonna select this, and then you can see it kind of added some text to our event. It says executes on all. And so what we can do here is we can have this event, which executes on everybody, take in an input parameter, which is the color. So we'll add an input parameter, and I believe the type is just linear color. And we'll call this the new color. And then we can call this event. So if we right click, we can just search for set color multi. And again, just, just, to, just to make clear this, you don't have to name it. You don't have to name it multi like this. I just like to do this as a naming standard. Um, whenever I'm making a multicast event, I like to put multi at the end, just so it's really, really obvious when I'm looking at this function that it's multicasted. So we can hook this up and then we can pass this in here. Oh, it's, it's yelling because I didn't. Uh, let me just refresh this. Okay, new color, there we go. And so now when we overlap with something, again, on the server, because this multicast event has to get called from the server, we set our color variable, which is now no longer replicated. But in order to replicate it, we say set color, which is a multicast event. And so this gets multicasted out to everybody. And so this function is gonna run on everybody, including the server, and it's going to be provided the color. So let's actually take our on rep current color function that we created last time. And I'm just going to move this back over to here now. And then we don't need this on rep function because it's not going to get called. So I'm just going to delete it. And there we go. So now this is going to work using event replication. So again, just to recap, when we overlap with something and we're on the server, we get a random color. We set our little variable here, which doesn't really do anything because it's not replicated. But then we call set color, which is a multicast event, and we pass that color along. And then this gets ran on every single client. And oh, we need to set, we did that wrong. We need to set our current color to whatever color was passed in. And then we set our vector parameter value, which is the color of the cube, to that new color. So let's see what happens if we run this now. So if I come over here and I hit this guy, you can see the color is now changing as it was before. And same with this one. So as you can see, we've achieved the exact same result, 
but instead of using variable replication, we are using function replication. So you might be asking, um, what is the difference between variable replication and function replication in terms of, you know, why would you use one versus the other? So I think the best, uh, the best way I can probably answer that is I would say you want to use variable replication over event replication whenever you can because it is more performant. Um, I obviously didn't write the engine code, so I don't know all the ins and out of exactly why it's more performant. But I do know whenever you're making a new of like a new entire event that has to be replicated, I know it does add a decent amount of overhead behind the scenes um, as opposed to just adding a adding a single variable that gets replicated. There's probably a bunch of documentation online if you're really interested in that. Um, exactly like how much more optimized it is. Um, but I, d I definitely know you want to favor variable replication over event replication when you can. Um, so for something like this, if I was actually making this cube in a real game, I would, I would most likely use variable replication because it works just fine. Um, but the downside to variable replication is it is a bit, uh, it is a bit slow. Um, like it doesn't, uh, the order of it doesn't necessarily, like it doesn't replicate the variable right away. It kind of replicates it on its own terms. And you can make some adjustments to that over here in the update frequency. So you see this updates uh, 100 times a second, I believe that is, um, which most of the time that's fine. But if you really need something to replicate like right away and you don't want to wait a frame, um, then you need to use event replication for that as opposed to variable replication. And variable replication is also very limited in the fact that the replication only goes from, from server to client. Like you can't have a variable and set it on the client and have that variable get replicated up to the server unless you use event replication. So, so far in this tutorial, we've only covered replication going one way. We've only covered it going from the client, or sorry, from the server to the client, right? Um, and that's that's the only way that variable replication works. So if you had a replicated variable, like this color variable that we had in the last video, if you tried to set this on the client and it's set to a replicated variable, uh, the variable will, will change just fine on a client like any other variable would, but it's not gonna somehow auto magically get sent to the server. Uh, var variables are only replicated if they're set on the server. So that's a very important thing to know. Um, generally speaking, if you have a replicated variable, you want to, you probably want to avoid setting it on the client at all because you just want it to be set to whatever value comes in from the server whenever it gets updated. Otherwise you might have conflicts between the server and the client. Now, obviously there's times you might want to, you might actually want to have conflicts between the server and the client, but generally speaking, if you have a replicated variable, you only want that variable to be set on the server and then get replicated to the client. Okay, so that is the very basics of event replication, the multicast. So there's also some more complex ones. So if we click on our multi guy over here, we have a couple other options here. We have run on server and we have run on owning client. So let me think about how to do those. All right, so I actually went ahead and set up a little scenario here so that I can explain the next part of this video um, just in the interest of time. So the next one we're going to cover over here is run on owning client. So we're actually going to skip over run on server. And the reason we're doing that is uh, I just want to come back to it later because currently in this video, we have only covered replication that goes from the server to the client. And I want to keep it that way until we get through all of that. So just like multicast, um, run on owning client has to be called from the server and it goes to the clients, except in this case, it only goes to one client. So we're gonna select this and I'm also gonna change this to be called client just so we can easily tell. So you might be asking, okay, which client does it go to? Cause it only goes to one unlike multicast. Uh, and the answer is, well, it's in the name. It goes to the owning client or the client that owns the actor, right? So, um, this concept is a little confusing, especially if you're new to net networking or Unreal, I guess. But I'll try to explain it the best that I can, because this one is definitely the most 
confusing one, I think, of all of them. Um, but once you understand it, it's really not that bad. So before you can understand how this works, you need to understand how owning works in Unreal. So to show you guys um, this visually, I've edited the box blueprint a little bit. So I've added this other box collision in front of it. And I just kind of put text in here that says change owner. So the idea is that whenever anybody walks into this box, it changes the owner of the box to whoever walked into it. So I'll just show you guys real quick kind of what I'm talking about. So you can see also above the box, I have the owner displayed. And currently, um, if you see to the right here, there is no owner of this box, right? Um, if I were to walk into it as the server character, you see it changes it to server character. And then if I were to walk into it as the client, it changes it to, well, it changes it to third person character. That just happens to be the name of the client character. Um, but we have third person character now as the owner. So now the client owns the box and now the server owns the box. So you can switch it back and forth and I can kind of show you what happens in both cases. So actually, before we do that, let me restart it one time and show you what happens if there is no owner. So by default, if you just have an object in your scene, um, Technically, nobody owns it. I'm not 100% sure on this logic, but from my testing, this seems to be the case. So technically, nobody owns this object. So if I were to go up and collide with it, you can see it changes colors only on the server. So the reason that this is happening is because if we look back at our code here, we're saying run the change color code on the owning client. And so I think what's happening behind the scenes is that Unreal is saying, okay, nobody actually owns, uh, nobody actually owns this actor. So let's just run it. Um, let's just run this function on whichever machine we happen to be on. So currently we're on the server because we have this has authority and we say set color. And so it says, okay, nobody owns this. Let's just run this locally. And you can kind of see that more clearly. If we change this to remote, so now we're saying only do collision um, on the client. So now if I run this and now I walk into it on the server, you can see it's changing colors on the client because even though nobody owns the actor, the client is the one doing the collision, right? So the client is the only one that sees um, it changing. So essentially there's basically no replication happening for this actor at this point. Um, Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm gonna change this back to authority here and then we'll get a better example. So now actually, let's actually change the, uh, let's actually change the owner to something other than none. So let's change it to, oops, let me change it to server. So now it is set to server. So now if the server hits this, you can see it basically behaves the same way it did before um, where it's only changing the color on the server. And likewise, if the client hits it, it still only changes the color on the client. But now let's change the owner of the box to the client. So now the client owns the box. So now when the client hits it, you can see the box only changes colors on the client because the client is the one that owns the box. And even if the server side, we were to go and hit it, it still only changes colors on the client because again, the client is the only one that owns this box. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I know it's a little bit confusing, but you just go back and rewatch this part if, it, if it's kind of confusing for you. Um, but this is really useful when you want something to only happen for a specific character. Um, a good example of this in a video game is something like camera shake. So if you like, uh, say you, you hit somebody with your sword, um, well, that collision detection that your sword hit them is going to be on the server, right? Um, but you want to specifically tell that character like, hey, do some camera shake, or maybe take damage is a good example, or, you know, like play a blood effect, right? You want to specifically tell that character to do a camera shake and to play a blood effect, like on his machine only, right? Like no other, no other machine needs to see the camera shake. Like that doesn't even make sense because you can't see the camera shake of somebody else's screen, right? So you're specifically telling that client, um, play, cam play camera shake. So that's a really good example of when you would use something like this. And for characters, it's a little it's a little simpler because um, on the right here, like I already own this guy. I don't have to set the owner of him. I'll show you how I'm doing that. Um, so if you look at this, if you look at this overlap event, so this is the overlap event for this box right here. Um, so all we're saying is whenever anything overlaps with this box on the server, set the owner of ourself to whoever overlapped with us. Um, 
And I guess this is important to point out, the set owner call needs to happen on the server, which is why I have switch has authority here. If you're, if you're just on a client and you just, you know, out of the blue say, hey, I own this object now, and you don't tell the server about it, um, it's not gonna do anything, right? You can't, just, you can't just claim objects for yourself. The server is the only one who can change who owns an object. You know, otherwise you could cheat pretty easily. You could just say, I own, you know, I own all the bullets and all the vehicles in the game. And then you could just, you know, very easily manipulate the game and hack it and take control over it. Um, so if you're setting the owner, you need to set the owner on the server. And just in case anybody's curious, this little replication widget over here I have, um, this thing right here, just to get that, all you do is you say, get owner. So I just have a reference to the queue and I just say get owner. So that's all that's happening here. It's really simple, just set owner and get owner. Um, but hopefully, hopefully that can make sense to you guys. So in the next part of this video, then we will cover the last one, which is run on server. So I'll see you guys in part three.